Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about March 12th, League of Legends DFS slate. Um, we have a five game slate. Um, we have three games in China, two games in Korea. Um, but let's do a quick recap about this morning's slate. Um, we, I think our predictions were kind of all over uh, the place yesterday based on the outcomes. Um, we had a lot of upsets uh, yesterday, unfortunately. Um, it happens. It happens probably once every while. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I think the optimal stack was LGD and T1. LGD being the primary stack and then T1 being the short stack and i think i believe lgd was the the biggest underdog on the slate um so kudos to those people who you know went out of the way to be able to play them um and then i think they paired them up with t1 who was who had some doubts in my opinion i think they lost one game but they still nonetheless kind of fooled around but they're still so good enough skilled enough to be able to um you know, just play toy with the with the other team, the opponent, um, and produce a lot of kills. So good for them. Congratulations to you guys if you guys um won that contest and did well. But today, um, we have a five game slate. We're not gonna have as many five game slates. So I appreciate you know, I really am trying to appreciate um you know, each of these slates that we have four or five games. Um, we are kind of approaching toward the end of the spring split so for what it's worth um let's try to appreciate this and let's try to make some money and let's go into the five game slate but without uh, uh before we go there uh if you like these videos and uh, find these videos informative please please smash the like button below uh, it would mean a lot to me and then uh, a true dfs channel that sponsors my videos so please uh, hit the like button all right, five game slate. AL versus EDG. EDG is a big, big favorite at minus eighteen hundred. Um, all right. Um, so yeah, we have EDG a big favorite at eighteen hundred minus eighteen hundred. Um, EDG has been a very solid team so far in the split. Um, we have JJ who's been pretty good, uh, pretty solid actually. Um, for that jungle position. And then Fofo uh, has been pretty solid as well. But really the ultimate gems, um, in my opinion, for EEG have been this split is Leave and Mako in the bottom lane. Leave's uh, metrics are off the charts um, compared to other top 80 carries. Um, really Leave, Mako, um, and then Ala, Ala in the top lane has been really, really solid. And I think he has the biggest advantage over ZDZ, his counterpart uh, for AL tonight. Um, so I like Ala uh, for any betters out there for prop bets, for any prize picks. Um, so that would be my choice. Um, but yeah, I mean, just based on the eye test, AL has been up and down. Um, a lot of disappointments between Betty and Sword Art and then Xiao Hao. You know, I really liked Xiao Hao and Betty from last uh, last season. Uh, coming into this season, I really had high expectations, higher expectations uh, for those two players that play in the key possessions that I value the most. Um, but they just have, they've, they've just been disappointing. I don't know any other way to put it. Um, so it is what it is. Um, and then, yeah, and then let's look at the metrics. We have EDGAL projected uh, at 23.5 kills total. And then we have points point seven three combined kills per minute, um, and then yeah we have jungle control advantage for Edward Gaming uh, by a significant margin at almost seven percent, and then twelve point one percent for gold spend percentage difference, which is very significant um, compared to, uh, you know what we have seen in the LPL uh, gold spend percentage difference that um, difference that we've seen before. So that is quite significant. That tells me that EDG really should secure this win. Um, I like EDG quite a bit, especially Ala, like I said. Um, I like EDG to win 2-0. to zero. I don't think I'm going to play any AL um, just because I am pretty confident that EDG is going to win. And as, as such, I think EDG is going to carry the highest ownership on the slate. Usually the LPL team that 
has the biggest odds, um, carries the biggest, highest ownership on slates like this. So I think ADG is going to be very popular. Um, if you want to fade them, obviously, and play another uh, LPL team that you think will produce higher kills, I mean, feel free to go for it. Um, but I, I think in an optimal uh, lineup or setting, I think EDG should be in there. Um, but yeah, I like I like EDG to secure the series win tonight here over anyone's legend. The next matchup is a closer matchup between FPX and uh, Rare Adam. You know, I don't really like Rare Adam uh, slates, but um, uh, thankfully they're on a five-game slate. Uh, also, this to me it looks like more of a toss up i'm still kind of struggling to see uh struggling to kind of determine who which team that i'm going to lean on and which team i'm going to predict to win um as you see that rare adam is a slight favorite uh by vegas um but just based on the eye test though fpx has been quite disappointing um to me at least care in the mid lane has been the best uh you know player for that team but everybody else has been very, very underwhelming performance. Uh, Hacker, especially in the in the jungle position, I am not a huge fan. So we'll see how he fares against um, Leian for Rare Adam, who has been pretty solid in my opinion. So um, I like Rare Adam quite a bit um, tonight, I think, um, just based on that jungle control percentage. Uh, no, I mean, uh, jungle difference. I think earned goals per minute jungle difference. Yeah. Uh, you see Leans is uh, 28 gold up on Hacker, which I understand. As mentioned, Hacker is not the best individually skilled player in the jungle position, but he does uh, do okay around the map, in my opinion. So, um, And then in the mid lane is Care, between, uh, uh, Care versus Strive. I think that will be an interesting one, but... Um, I th still think Care is a little bit better than Strive, has been a little bit better than Strive this split. Um, and then I think Rare Adam should have an advantage in every single other lane. I, I think the bottom lane is an interesting one. I think te technically LWX has a little bit of advantage, gold advantage over Awesome, but still I think it's a toss-up um, between... Uh, LWX, Chocho versus Awesome and BKR. BKR starting again at support, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference in my opinion, uh, you know, uh, for Rare Adam. So you see like the team's jungle control percentage, FPX actually leads by a slight margin, 0.3%, but lane control is led by Rare Adam. Um, you see that Rare Adam has an advantage in the other metrics. So I do think... Um, in a situ close situation like this, you know, I always, not always, I like, I tend to go toward the team with the team that have a better jungler, um, in my opinion, which is Leanne. So I'm going to go with Rare Adam to win here tonight. Um, I'm going to go Rare Adam wins 2-1. Two, two, I think it's going to be a close one. Um, I will have some exposure to FPX, maybe. I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't decided, but I may take a stance that Rare Adam's going to win Uh, and then not have any exposure to FPX. That will be one way to kind of take a stance and differentiate my lineups. Um, But yeah, I do think Rare Adam's going to win, so I think it's an interesting one and decent, decent kill upside here tonight. All right, and then we have JDG versus LNG. Um, we have JDG at minus 230 uh, over LNG, as a, who's an underdog, at plus 175. As you guys know, if you watch my videos before about LNG, Scout has been lights out, probably the best mid laner in the LPL so far, going up against Knight, who has been decent himself but not as good as scout um metric wise but also i test wise scout has been really really solid so that in itself gives lng a chance to win but jdg is jdg and they've been so solid this split i know they they've had some hiccups here and there but they were bound to have that with the new ad carry who who does not speak mandarin um so i think there were some communication issues and 
also 369 has been very disappointing in my opinion compared to his teammates uh the level that his teammates have performed with 369 has not been has not quite gotten there yet i know he has a he's a, has a very he has had a very illustrious career um but this split probably has been the worst split uh personally that i've seen out of him um, but nonetheless, I think his form's gonna pick back up, and when when they when he when it does, I think JDG is gonna be just so dominant over any other team in the LPL, including LNG. But right now, I mean, I think it's gonna come down to Zika and Scout, who have uh, the earned goals per minute advantage that I saw on the metric side. Um, but JDG has a better jungler in AD Carry, who I, you know, those two possessions that I value the most. So, and, and you know, you see that jungle difference is real between Kanavi and Tarzan. Tarzan has been pretty solid as well, along with Scout, as mentioned for that LNG team. But you see Kanavi has a 46, 46 EGPM difference uh, over uh, Tarzan. And then you see JDG leads and all those other metrics that I just posted on my notes. Um, but yeah, I think JDG should win. And the kill upside is like off the charts here, like compared to other matchups on the slate. So I'm going to go with JDG wins two to one. No, I'm going to say two to two to zero. I think JDG is going to step up to the challenge here tonight. I think Knight is smart enough. And three six nine is smart and experienced enough to do oh to 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 do all right. I mean to not let Scout or Zika snowball, um, which LNG likes to do in the top half of that map. So I like JDG to step up tonight and then take care of business by winning two to zero. Um, I like um, Kanavi quite a bit. Um, should smash, I think. Um, yeah, I mean that jungle difference, uh, uh, difficult difference is quite a bit, and I think JDG showing up, I uh, like JDG quite a bit, uh, especially also given that the combined kills per minute is really high and kill upside is really high, so I like JDG in the spot tonight. Um, and then yeah, I think that also the the fact that this matchup has a good kill upside naturally makes LNG a good GPP play as well. I think I'll have maybe one one or two lineups with LNG pieces. I will have some exposure to LNG maybe. So that's all I got for the LPL matchups. And then in Korea, we have Freddy Brion versus Dom, uh, D plus Kia. Look at this kills over under though. Man, 19. But I get it though. Look at the combined kills, kills per minute. It's at point. Five nine. I mean that is really really low. Um, and let's see, do we have any substitution risk here? Nope, we do not with these two teams. So yeah, that's. I think this is a very interesting one. I think D plus Kia obviously should win. Um, you see all all that is supported uh, by the key metrics, especially I think um, Showmaker and Kana uh, should do really well based on what I've seen. Uh, based on what I saw on the metric side of it. Um, so I think those are the players that I would like to focus the most. Um, I haven't looked at any kill participation or kill share percentage. So, you know, please uh, reference those um, if you are building a lineup using D plus Kia pieces. But uh, in terms of the earned gold per minute difference, uh, mid and top, there, there's a huge gap there. So I think DK wins to... Two to zero. And let's let's look at the standings real quick. To see if there's any seeding implications. Because we talked about that for T1 yesterday. Um 15 and 1, DK. 11 and 4. Yeah. So oh wow. KT is 11 and 5. So yeah, I mean, it matters. It matters a lot. So D plus Kia is gonna be very motivated to play. To win tonight, um, I think DK takes care of business, but the kill upside is low. I think DK wins two to zero with very low kill upside. I may completely just fade this matchup. I think a lot of people will try to play D plus Kia for uh, cash games um, and often will lineups, but even then, I don't even know if. 
that's going to be enough for D plus Kia to be in an optimal lineup. Cause I, I just see them winning like 10 to five, you know, like 12 to six or something like very low, very low kill upside matchup. So um, I think I'm not going to use any D plus Kia or Fred Abreon. So that's probably, that's where I'm at. Um, but it may change. <laughs> All right, last matchup on the slate is Genji versus Guangdong Freaks. Now, this is this has much more. Uh, this has a slightly uh, higher kill upside at twenty one point five kills over under, and then combined kills per minute setting at 0. 0.69. Um, so that's an interesting one where Genji likes to play ten, tends to play a little well a lot faster compared to the plus Kia that we just talked about. And then Guangdong Freaks plays faster than Fred Brian as well. So I think that in itself tells me that this matchup should produce more kills um, than the other Korean matchup that we just talked about. You see, Genji is in a similar boat. Um, they are tied with D plus Kia. So if you if Genji in the second game sees D plus Kia winning, I mean, you know that Genji is going to be very, very motivated to win tonight. And you see Guangdong Freaks is at the bottom. Uh, at four wins and 11 losses, um, they do not really have any reason to uh, to win, really. I think they they don't have any playoff hope. Um, so I just feel like Genji should smash here tonight. Um, you see that Genji has an advantage uh, in all of the lanes, especially in the mid lane. So Chovy, Chovy God, <laughs> School of Chovy, um, all the nicknames for Chovy I'm throwing out there, but you know, it'll be interesting to see if Chovy just smashes or dominates that mid lane over KDF. So I like Gen G wins two to zero as well. I think they will try to take care of business. Um, I don't think they will pull around um in a scenario in a spot spot like this. So I think this is also gonna be kind of like on the lower kill upside side. Um, where Genji is going to try to just take care of business and finish the game and win the series uh, where, you know, they're not going to rack up as many kills that we're interested in for DFS purposes. So I'm going to say Genji wins two to zero with a moderately low kill upside. But yeah, playoff implications matter a lot for these teams, especially, I mean, in Korea, like people, Players are uber focused um, when they are in a spot like this. So, like, if any of these two teams, Gen G and D plus Kia, if they drop one, you see that KT is sitting there too. I mean, they they want to secure that number two or three spot, right? Like, they really want that for the playoffs. So, because um, you know the seating matters quite a bit depending on what kind of bracket you're in, what kind of bracket you're, you know, how many more games you have to play as a lower seed um, and play more games, and that could be grueling and. T1 has already secured hit their spot in the second round of the playoffs. So, you know, you, they are trying to fight for that second spot and, you know, be matched up against a, a worst, worst team. Um, I think they want to avoid HLE and stuff like that. So, but anyway, um, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, please, please reach out at the FS Chan. Otherwise, good luck out there. What was that? Yeah, smash that like button. You heard the you heard the man over here. So smash the like button. Uh, get us to fifty likes. Let's do it. Um, but until then, I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, good luck out there, and let's have some fun. Bye bye. Say bye.